The Exorcist, released in 1973, is a horror film that follows the story of a young girl possessed by a mysterious entity and the two priests who attempt to save her through an exorcism. This movie has become a classic, known for its chilling scenes and the intense atmosphere it creates. As we dive into the world of The Exorcist, get ready for a mix of surprising, funny, and touching stories related to this film. Now, I'm curious, do you recall a moment that you hold dear involving The Exorcist? Or perhaps you've come across some fascinating tidbits about the film that grabbed your attention. We're eager to hear from you as well. Share your most memorable experiences or personal connections with The Exorcist in the comments. Your stories and memories are what make discussions like this so special. Let's get started. The Exorcist, directed by William Friedkin, remains a compelling cinematic experience decades after its release. Its ability to shock and terrify persists, not merely due to the infamous scenes of supernatural occurrences, but because of its masterful direction and screenplay that focus on human suffering and the intersection with the supernatural. The film's portrayal of a young girl's severe affliction, which blurs the lines between medical and spiritual realms, invites the audience to share in the emotional journey of the characters. Ellen Burstyn's performance as the mother, grappling with her daughter's condition, and Linda Blair's portrayal of the afflicted child are particularly noteworthy. The film's technical achievements and special effects also contribute to its lasting impact, convincingly depicting the harrowing events of possession. Set against a backdrop of profound questions about faith and existence, The Exorcist stands out as a work that not only explores, but also challenges our perceptions of horror and the human condition. It is a narrative that doesn't shy away from the raw and often disturbing aspects of its story, ensuring that it continues to resonate with audiences as a profound exploration of faith, death, and the human soul. In a poignant moment of life imitating art, Jason Miller, known for his role as a troubled priest, was working on a play about a father and son when he passed away. His son, Joshua John Miller, was left to finish their joint project. Meanwhile, the film's atmosphere was so intense that director William Friedkin considered having the set exercise. Technical advisor Thomas Birmingham declined, fearing it would only heighten the tension. Instead, he opted to bless the set, offering words of comfort to the uneasy cast and crew. Adding to the film's authenticity, the Greek song Paramathaki moved by Giannis Kalatsis, which translates to my tale, echoes in the background during a key scene, its lyrics penned by Lefteris Papadopoulos, who later sought compensation for his work. In a casual setting, two priests share a moment over beers to the tune of Ramblin' Man by the Allman Brothers Band. The film's impact reached far beyond the screen, with claims by Billy Graham of a demon residing within the film's very material. Lee J. Cobb's legacy continued through George C. Scott, who not only succeeded Cobb in his role as Lieutenant Kinderman in the sequel, but also in other notable performances previously held by Cobb. Scott stepped into roles in Twelve Angry Men and Death of a Salesman, both of which Cobb had famously portrayed, continuing the thread of these characters' stories. In crafting a narrative that delves into the origins of certain elements in this well-known horror film, it's notable that the name of the possessed girl Reagan has roots in ancient Norse mythology. This name is associated with a figure who embodies both malevolence and magical prowess, similar to a character in Shakespeare's tragedy who is known for her treachery. The film also features Jack McGowan, an actor with a history of roles in critically acclaimed films, including one that secured the Best Picture Oscar. Furthermore, the film's antagonist, a demon, draws from Mesopotamian lore, embodying a dual nature of harm and protection, which adds a layer of irony to the film's events, as this entity, known for safeguarding children, is seen afflicting a young girl. In a notable shift from the norm, John Borman turned down the opportunity to direct a well-known horror film due to its harsh portrayal of children. Despite this, he later agreed to helm the sequel, which also faced its share of controversy. During production, a significant change was made to a particularly disturbing scene involving the young protagonist, played by Linda Blair, leading to a less offensive, but still provocative alternative. The production process was far lengthier than initially planned, extending well beyond the scheduled 85 days to a total of 224 days on set in America. Mercedes McCambridge, known for her Oscar-winning role in All the King's Men, is among a select group of actresses who have earned the Best Supporting Actress Award for performances in films that also won Best Picture. 
This illustrious list includes talents such as Hattie McDaniel, Teresa Wright, and Meryl Streep, highlighting the exceptional achievements of these actresses in cinema history. In his final performances, Lee J. Cobb portrayed Lieutenant Kinderman, a character that would later be revived in the 1990 sequel with George C. Scott stepping into the role. This casting choice seemed to resonate with director William Friedkin, who, years later, would cast Scott in a role originally played by Cobb in a remake of Twelve Angry Men. The film adaptation diverged from the novel in several aspects, notably omitting the graphic depiction of Reagan's condition, which included severe diarrhea and an overwhelming odor in her room likened to that of a cage. Notably, the film's initial release excluded the spider walk scene performed by contortionist Ann Miles due to technical limitations in concealing the wires and the scene's early occurrence in the film. However, this decision was reversed in the extended 2000 version where the scene was reinstated with the wires removed digitally. In the casting process for the pivotal role of Father Karras, Jack Nicholson was considered before Jason Miller was ultimately chosen Ader. The director, William Friedkin, felt Nicholson didn't fit the image of a priest. To bring the story to life, the production team constructed three different beds, each engineered for specific movements required during intense scenes. The filming faced numerous setbacks, including technical issues with an expensive air conditioning system. This system, costing 50000 was essential to create the frozen breath effects in Reagan's room. However, it frequently malfunctioned, causing delays and budget overruns. Freakin recounted these challenges during a 26 screening, highlighting the difficulties of maintaining sub-zero temperatures in the face of powerful studio lights. In the making of this groundbreaking film, the team relied solely on practical effects, as confirmed by cinematographer Owen Roisman. The authenticity of the visuals was achieved without any post-production tricks, all filmed live on set. The emotional intensity kicked off from the very first scene, capturing the turmoil of Father Caras at Bellevue Psychiatric Hospital, deeply troubled over his mother's situation. This raw emotion carried into the filming of the climactic exorcism scene, where even the seasoned actor Max von Sydow found himself momentarily speechless, taken aback by Linda Blair's intense performance. These moments underscore the film's commitment to genuine, powerful storytelling. After the release of the film, Father O'Malley found himself inundated with bizarre requests, one of which he humorously declined, refusing to leap out a window for a pet cat. Meanwhile, the story that sparked the novel's creation was based on Ronald Edwin Hunkler's experiences. Hunkler, who later had a successful career at NASA and developed a heat-resistant technology for space shuttles, passed away in 2020 without ever publicly discussing the events that led to the novel. His death came just shy of his 86th birthday, and the question of whether his case was one of true possession or mental illness remains a topic of debate. In an interesting twist, William O'Malley, who was part of the film's cast, later described it to his students as a pornographic horror film, a stark contrast to the movie's widespread acclaim and influence.